TY7 News, the U of I is getting ready for the Vice President's visit to campus. We'll talk live with one of the campus coordinators of the event. Champaign-Urbana is getting ready for the Illinois Marathon this weekend. Find out how the weather could affect the race. And the Illini wheelchair athlete is ready to take on London in her quest for another marathon win. UI7 News starts right now. From the Richmond Journalism Teaching Studio at the University of Illinois campus, UI7 News, your U of I news source. Good evening, I'm Enrique Scarpita. And I'm Sneha Shukla. The next few days will be very busy in Champaign-Urbana. The Vice President is coming to campus and thousands will hit the streets for a big marathon. To find out more about the Vice President's visit, check out, the, check out with uh, UI7's journey, uh, Sharon Kurniawan. The Vice President of the United States of America, Joe Biden, will be here at Campus Recreation Center East at 1 p.m. tomorrow to discuss sexual assault prevention on college campuses. And he's going to talk about the launch of It's On Us campaign that focuses on ending sexual assault on college campuses. The reason why he's here at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign is because the university has the most students participating on the pledge for this campaign thus far. In Urbana, I'm Sharon Kurniawan. Back to you, studio. Student tickets are no longer available for the It's On Us event. The event organizers handed out their last of tickets this past uh, yesterday. The Illinois Student Senate wants as many students as possible to attend the event, but the Campus Recreation Center East may not have enough room for those. Um, for those wanting to uh, attend the event, they have to have a physical ticket to get in. More tickets were handed out than space available, so having a ticket may not guarantee you a spot. If you have not gotten a ticket, there is a possible wait list. The organizers of a vice president's visit are looking forward to tomorrow's event. With us in the studio is one of those organizers of the It's On Us campaign, Matt Hill, is the vice president of the Student Senate. Thanks for coming in, Matt. Thanks so much for having me, guys. So tomorrow is a really busy day. What are some last minute things that you have to prepare for before the big event? Yeah, so we're just sort of keep, we're continuing building excitement among the student body. We're still doing outreach to students, making sure they know to get there early because it is going to be busy and then we'll have to go through security. Um, look, really hoping to have a good turnout. So uh, sort of just building excitement among the student body um, to really thank the vice president for coming here to thank us for our efforts in the, in the It's On Us campaign. So why do you think that Joe Biden decided to come to U of I in the first place? You know, I think we've been a national leader in the It's On Us campaign. We've been working closely with some of the national organizers of It's On Us uh, in D.C. We've done really uh, basic things like collecting pledge drive, collecting pledge signatures to have students take the It's On Us pledge to stop sexual assault. But we've also done some really unique things like a Twitter town hall. We use sexual assault peer educators um, to respond to students' questions about the campaign and about sexual assault at U of I. Um, and then we handed out free t-shirts to them, uh, you know, in real time if they were tweeting at us. So I, I think we've really just been a national national leader and sort of a role model for other campuses um, to for implementing the SMS campaign. So since you've been involved in this campaign, like where do you think the, uh, the conversation on sexual assault is right now at the U of I campus? I, I think since we've launched the campaign here at U of I, we've definitely started creating more of a comfortable environment to, for students to speak about sexual assault and, and started creating more support for survivors on campus. Um, we've dealt with students who said, yeah, this is the campaign to and then they don't want to say sexual assault. But I think what we've been doing is making people more comfortable about talking about this issue, which in, in effect is going to make uh, students feel more comfortable addressing the issue, stepping up and stopping sexual assault from happening on campus. Yeah. So big question. So are you actually going to get to meet Vice President or do you think any, anyone will? Um, I, I actually don't know, but I, I really do hope lots of students turn out to see him. Um, I know he's going to be giving a speech at, at one about sexual assault and making um, comments about it's on us. So I hope a lot of students do turn out. And if they get to meet him or if I do, that would be really cool. But I, I'm just really excited to hear his remarks. Thanks oh, a lot, great. Matt. I Thank really you, appreciate Matt. you coming in and talking to us about this really you know, interesting, amazing Yeah, campaign. I hope the VP's trip goes here well. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks, guys. With the topic of Sexual Assault Awareness Month buzzing around the U of I campus, one student group has decided to get a little creative while spreading the word. UI7's Alex Elich has the story.
breezy and beautiful day on the quad at the University of Illinois. Some are walking to class, but others are chalking the quad, and it's for a cause. Really a chance for the campus to recognize the huge problem that sexual assault presents, not only for campuses, but for the U.S. as a whole. Larson is the Advocates for Change president here on campus. She partnered up with the Women's Resource Center to put events for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. One event yesterday was Chalking the Quad with facts and messages about sexual assault. Chalking is a really great way to get the message across to people that might not be able to come to an event or that might be more interested in reading that message. Um, they might be more affected by it as they're just kind of walking the class. And it's no longer about educating the public about the issue, but also breaking the silence. The University of Illinois community is taking a stand to prevent sexual assault and with one goal in mind, to raise awareness about sexual violence. People want to think it's some far off terrifying thing and it's not. One in four women will be sexually assaulted in their lifetime in the U.S. McClay and Larson are hoping that the words on the sidewalk inspire people about sexual assault and come forward. And the message is simple. Um, it is not your fault. Um, there are people out there who are willing to support you, who are there for you. There's a community that cares. There are resources available. You know, you are believed, you are cared about, and, you know, we want, we're here to help. When McClay isn't helping with events for Sexual Assault Awareness Month, she's here at the Women's Resource Center. The Women's Resource Center offers support groups and helps other RSOs with the cause. Even with days left of Sexual Assault Awareness Month, this has been one of the most successful months yet. We've had so many people um, out at these different events, lots of media requests, like lots of people who want to know more about the issue. Chalking the Quad might be small, but it has a big message. In Urbana, I'm Alex Elich, UI7 News. The Vice President's visit is not the only big event happening in Champaign-Urbana. The Illinois Marathon is taking place this weekend and organizers are getting ready for it. Signs are being put up all around Champaign-Urbana and campus in preparation for the race. The marathon begins at 7 a.m. on Saturday and is expecting to have more than 20,000 participants. Rain is forecast for Saturday and race organizers say the race will happen no matter what. Well, the race will happen rain or shine. If it's raining, we'll have it. The only thing that would cancel or delay the race would be thunderstorms or some kind of tornadic activity. There would not be a rescheduled date. It either happens Saturday or it doesn't. If the race is canceled, refunds will not be given. Participants and spectators of this weekend's Illinois Marathon will have to follow proper security procedures to ensure full safety of the public. UI7's UI Niasia Ellison has more. Two years ago, on April 15th, there was a bomb at the Boston Marathon. The Illinois Marathon is this weekend, and coordinators are more cautious. Yesterday, we spoke with Scott Friedline, who is the emergency services coordinator for the Illinois Marathon. He says the Boston bombing was a wake-up call for them. I think part of what we do is we have to look at risk assessment and whether or not our event would be a potential target. And while we don't feel there's a strong likelihood of that, we can't dismiss the fact that we potentially still could be a target. Over 100 police officers and 600 volunteers will be patrolling the 26-mile run this Friday and Saturday. We spoke to senior Kelly Sprague last night. She will be a runner in the marathon this weekend. She says she isn't too worried about safety issues. I was a little bit concerned, but overall I've never heard of any really big issues here in Champaign, so it never really crossed my mind too much. The first time runner studying kinesiology says she thinks Champaign will do what they can do to keep everyone safe. I think there's only so much you can do um, to prevent issues um, like ha things that happen like at the Boston Marathon, but um, I think overall they're making sure that it's going to be a safe event and uh, make sure that it's run right. So I'm standing where the start of the race will take place. As you can see, I have a map here that allows the runners to know where they can stop and get water, where the police patrols will be, as well as where they can stop and get medical attention. All running areas will be investigated before the marathon begins. Friedline describes some of the procedures participants must follow. Runners who are doing the marathon or half marathon can actually check items uh, that we store for them so when they get back they can change their clothes and things like that. Uh, when they do that, that's also screened through a process. The marathon will begin on 1st and St. Mary Street and end at the Memorial Stadium. All security procedures will be enforced on spectators as well. In Champaign, I'm Naysia Ellison, UI7 News. Champaign-Urbana buses are going to be rerouted this Friday and Saturday due to the marathon. These reroutes take place every year for the marathon and are there to make sure that participants stay safe. 
On Friday, the 5K will take place on campus, which means the green, silver, Illini, Airbus, and yellow will be rerouted starting at 6 p.m. The next day on Saturday, all MTD reroutes will be rerouted for the whole day. For more details, you can go to the website at cumtd.com. Thousands of people are expected to take part in this year's marathon, and many more will watch from the sidewalks. To make sure traffic moves smoothly, the marathon organizers have released a map of the course. The 26.2-mile marathon route is marked on the map in blue. The race will start along 1st Street, south of the State Farm Center. The race will make its way through Champaign-Urbana and end at the 50-yard line inside of Memorial Stadium. To avoid the race, police urge you to take the orange marked route to get around town. To get live updates, you can go on to IllinoisMarathon.com. You may not know it, but there's a wildlife medical clinic at the U of I. They need your help. We'll tell you why next. And today is Earth Day. Come up and find out why U of I students are doing on campus to go green. The U of I Veterinary School's Wildlife Medical Clinic decided to celebrate Earth Day in their own way. I had the chance to take a closer look at wildlife festivities. In honor of Earth Day, the U of I Wildlife Medical Clinic held a fundraiser earlier today at Enterprise Works with local subway franchise owners in order to raise money for their wildlife patients. The clinic is run by veterinary students who volunteer and must rely on donations to care for the animals. Christine Dietrich, an Associate Director of Advancement who handles fundraising, explains what the main goal of the wildlife clinic is. So when you find an animal in the wild, you can bring it into the University of Illinois and we will treat it. And our goal is always to be able to make sure it's healthy and to be able to release it back into the wild. The clinic gets up to 1,400 to 1,600 patients throughout the year and some patients, like Noel, a tiny owl has become a representative of the clinic. Second year vet student Def Stephanie Dantino is the only one who can hold and navigate her and she became one of our residents for the clinic. So she goes out for different events and to kind of spread all of our information about the wildlife clinic out into the community. She is one patient among many who came to the clinic eight years ago with nerve damage in her wing which prevent her from flying and being unable to hunt and survive in the wild. Any donation to the clinic benefits all the animals. All donations will go towards the care of temporary and permanent residents, like Noel here, a saw-wet owl who will stay in captivity. Every Subway sandwich that was ordered in advance costs $6, and all proceeds will benefit the Wildlife Clinic and pays for food, diagnostic tests, equipment, medications, consultations, and surgeries for all the patients. In Champaign, I'm Enrique Scarpita, UI7 News. One Urbana dog has tested positive for canine influenza and dog owners are urged to take precautions. Dogs should reduce contact with other animals during this time of high risk and can receive a vaccine. The currently available vaccine protects dogs against a strain of influenza that isn't the virus from Asia found in the infected Urbana dog. Veteran veterinary experts say you don't necessarily have to get your dog vaccinated, but it wouldn't hurt. Dogs who are at higher risk of infection, including those going to daycare, kennels, dog shows, or traveling, are advised to get vaccined. The University Vet Med Hospital has taken extra precautions by setting up extra isolation areas in case more cases are discovered. Leaders in Champaign-Urbana held a meeting at the Alma Mater Plaza to discuss the launch of a multimodal corridor enhancement project. The goal of MCOR is to provide a balance between all modes of transportation, improve infrastructure, and promote sustainability. This five-part transformative project covers Green Street, White Street, Armory Avenue, and Wright Street, and is funded in part by a $15.7 million federal Tiger Grant from the United States Department of Transportation. The University, City of Champaign, City of Urbana and Champaign, and Urbana Mass Transit are working together to give streets wider lanes for the use of vehicles, wider sidewalks for pedestrians, and contain bike lanes. One of the City of Champaign developers discusses the goals of the project students, faculty, staff, citizens, bikes, buses, cars, all of that operating in such tight quarters. We want to make sure that at the end of this project we have a very balanced transportation system that's both effective and efficient and very safe. Construction on first phases will start at the end of next year and will run through 2019. Today is Earth Day and some U of I students and organizations are taking advantage of this day by spreading the word and encouraging others to either go green or stay green. 
Students for Environmental Concerns set up a demonstration on the quad today to raise awareness about excessive coal use and how the university plays a part. One student shared how he feels. Okay. Well, Sneha, it's great to know that some organizations on campus really care about the environment. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, we use so many uh, fossil fuels and everything, and it's it's good and to learn about how to stay green and how to, you know, keep things, um, yeah. I myself Healthy. get really mad when someone litters. <laughs> yeah, littering's literally is a good way using, um, d you know, detergents and products that aren't harmful for the environment. I mean, you went out today and, uh, you know, did a, you know, met with some people that were on the quad uh, celebrating Earth Day. I mean, how was that? Um, yeah, it was pretty great um, for them to see how they raise money just for the animals, and it's just privately owned, so they have no funding. But it's pretty. It was pretty awesome, and that owl was really cute. <laughs> We'll check in your weather for Illinois Marathon and more next. Well, Sneha, um, it's pretty great that early April was really warm, but it is pretty chilly right now. It's getting quite cold, and I mean, this morning I had to wear, like, you know, a pea coat because it was so cold. Yeah. So Lauren Matthews is going to tell us what the weather's like this week. Good evening. Well, we saw a cloudy start to our day today, that coming along with the cold front that brought those showers last night. But luckily, we've been able to make it up into the 50s today, the sun burning off a lot of those clouds. Again, 50 degrees here in Champaign-Urbana, a little bit chillier up in Kankakee, 47 degrees. But 50s throughout a lot of the region, warmer down in southern Illinois, of course, Paducah reaching 63 degrees, a little bit chillier up in Chicago, 42, but mid to low 50s throughout the Midwest. If you look at the national temperatures right now, 72 degrees out in Salt Lake City. That seems pretty nice for this time of year. A little bit chillier out in Los Angeles, 62 degrees. And taking a look at the eastern seaboard, they are just about to get that storm system that we saw last night, but not quite yet. So it's a little bit milder, 66 degrees in New York. Here is that storm system I was talking about in the national radar. There it is pushing off to the eastern seaboard, bringing um, some showers over there. The clouds that we saw earlier this morning burned off and are moving away with that system. And the next chance we see for some precipitation comes with this low pressure system up here. You can see the clouds associated with that on the, in the Pacific Northwest. That is going to come around our way come Saturday. But again, right now, like I said, most of the showers in the area are pushing off into Indiana. We're going to see clear skies for pretty much the rest of the night, lucky for us. That's going to bring it down to 32 degrees, a little bit chilly for this time of year, but the winds do die down only 5 to 10 miles per hour out of the west. Tomorrow it's going to be chilly in the morning, so make sure if you're going out in the morning you wear a jacket or a sweater, but we're going to see temperatures getting into the high 50s, possibly breaking 60 degrees. A windier again, winds out of the northwest, 10 to 20 miles per hour, possibly seeing some gusts up to 25 miles per hour again. If you look at the five-day forecast, Tomorrow, uh, Friday, 61 degrees. Saturday, that's that chance of showers I was talking about. It's going to start late Friday night coming into Saturday with a chance of thunderstorms as well. So marathon runners, be winter, not winter, excuse me, be weather aware for the marathon on Saturday. After that system moves through, we're going to see low to mid 60s Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, partly cloudy. Wow, into the 30s? That's pretty cold. And there's going to be a frost advisory tonight, so everyone should probably stay pretty bundled. Mm -hmm. We have Ryan Stern here with sports. You think you're having a good week? Find out what former Illini might be having a better week than you. Hint, she's in London this week, and it could be a historic weekend. Also, after the break, we'll take a look into a huge weekend for Illini tennis. Don't go anywhere. The Fighting Illini baseball team has continued their incredible season and has now cracked the top 10. Illinois, coming off a huge 10-1 victory against Eastern Illinois last night, is now ranked number 8 in the country. According to head coach Dan Hartlib, this high ranking isn't getting his team off of focus. Well, we practiced well yesterday. I thought uh, they did a very good job when they came out. And, and then, uh, you know, again, composure today and uh, just finding ways to win games. And, and everybody's very focused, so really pleased with how they've handled this. 
On a 14-game win streak, Illinois hits the road this weekend for seven straight away games, kicking things off at Penn State this Friday. You know, I thought I was having a great week. Well, my week has nothing on former Illinois wheelchair champion athlete Tatiana McFadden. The Olympian started off her week casually winning the Boston Marathon. This is her third time winning the Boston. Are you kidding me? Just incredible. Well, her awesome week continues. It was her birthday yesterday, happy birthday, and she just landed in London to compete in the London Marathon this Sunday. Now, if she wins the London, she will have won the Grand Slam for her second time. That means winning at Boston, Chicago, London, and New York City. To put that into perspective, no man or woman running or in a wheelchair has ever won four major marathons, not even one time, and she's going for it twice. As I said, I thought my week was going all right. Well, thanks, Tatiana. You showed me. Best of luck. Well, forget the Illinois Marathon. Another huge sporting event is coming to Champaign-Urbana this weekend. The Big Ten Men's t Tennis Tournament starts tomorrow and lasts until this Sunday at the Atkins Tennis Center in Urbana. The men's team is coming off a huge win in Madison this past weekend, where the Illini claimed their first regular season title since 2005. The tennis team will see action on Friday morning at 10 a.m., facing the winner of the 8th and 9th seed. But move over, men. The women's team is coming in hot. That's right. Finishing, finishing the season on a scorching hot seven-game win streak, the women are headed into the Big Ten Tournament in Northwestern this weekend. As the season comes to an end and her career comes to an end, senior Melissa Kopinski talks about her favorite memory as an Illini. Going back to my freshman year, actually, uh, we beat number eight Texas at Texas. I remember my, uh, one of the seniors clinched, and she had zero motion when she clinched. And I just keep looking back to it every time we clinch, how impossible that is. Hopefully both tennis teams find themselves celebrating this weekend. Well, that wraps it up. And I'll tell you, Sneha, I couldn't be more excited for Tatiana. I think she's going to do a great job this weekend. I really hope she does great this weekend, too. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, London's a great city. There are new members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. That's part of tonight's Hollywood Minute. Rock and roll lovers rejoice. The band behind this anthem is among several new members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, Ringo Starr, and Green Day were just some of the musicians inducted over the weekend. Usher is still recovering from foot surgery, but that didn't stop him from showing off his moves at an Earth Day concert. The R&B star even had gold crutches custom made for the event. He's now giving the crutches away to promote the Global Citizen Earth Day app. Furious 7 held on to the number one spot at the box office for the third weekend in a row, making nearly $30 million. Kevin James' sequel, Paul Blart Mall Cop 2, opened in second place. Horror flick Unfriended rounded out the top three. For Hollywood Minute, I'm Andy Rose. I live for like 10 seconds. That wraps up tonight's edition of UI7 News. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next Wednesday. There's another edition of UI7 News tomorrow night. Good night.